Hello everybody and welcome to Starnet Link and today we're going to go ahead and do a book review. This book review is by Dolores Canyon and this book is called The Search for Hidden Sacred Knowledge and for people who do not know or have not listened to my previous book reviews, I'm going to give out some spoilers about the book. So if you don't want to hear about the hear about spoilers of this book, I recommend going to go see my other videos on my YouTube channel. So any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get into some of the background and knowledge and some stuff, some spoilers about this book. So for people who want to read this book, I recommend that you read this book after the Consodians and Keepers of the Garden, as well as the first book of The Cultivated Universe, because all those three books all tie into this type of book. Um, the beginning of the book, it, or the first chapter of the book, is basically a collection of stories about um, Egypt and especially about the god of Isis. Um, back in the day, a lot of people thought that Isis is um, like an evil god or I think today a lot of people think that Isis is evil, but according to the story of Dolores Canyon, Isis was not evil. Isis was the bringer of knowledge of ancient sacral knowledge. And in the book, she talks about how Isis did physically come to earth in her form. And they also talk about that where she also crossed over on a crystal bridge. I don't know the significance of that in, in the Egyptian culture, but any person that want, is a psychic or any person that knows anything about the crystal bridge, it'll be interesting to investigate that further but um the story goes is that she is doing a reading like just like normal and sharing these collection of stories from her patients and one of the stories is about where she's doing a reading on a person where she talks about the story of Isis but she also talks about the story of the priest so in this book um, certain children were born with certain type of abilities. And these type of abilities, the parents could not take care of them. So they would drop off the kid at the temple and have the priest or priestesses of the temple raise the kid and learn about their abilities. Now, the other thing about it is, is that a lot of people started to abuse the teachings like they would go to the temple, learn about the teachings, and they would abuse it on other people or animals or whatever. Like they would abuse it. And then they would go back to the temple of healing and they would start this vicious cycle over and over again. And when we go through a lot of these stories through this book, it's always about stories of people abusing power abusing the ability or the gifts that was handed to them as well as destroying ancient and sacred knowledge because they were afraid that the power that they cannot have this power or it'll be too powerful in a sense the other thing about it is is that when we are hearing some of these stories a lot of this ancient technology or abilities is always about manifesting as well as crystal light healing as well as sound healing. She does say in Egypt that there is supposed to be hidden sacred knowledge at the base of the Sphinx. But due to the fact that the base of the Sphinx or the bottom of the Sphinx is covered in water or buried in water, that it would be impossible to get to, not only because of the water, but because that our ancient ancestors made sure that this, that certain secret hidden knowledge can only be accessed by certain individuals that have a very specific vibrational frequency. So even though that we are searching for hidden sacred knowledge around the world, we still will not be accessed 
be able to access it unless we have very specific people that ha- are that are at the right vibrational frequency. But she also does talk about that during Egyptian, there was an attack by machine people. Like there were people from another planet that were basically, I guess, AI or just basically mechanical people that were hunting down ISIS because they wanted her knowledge. They wanted the knowledge that she was bringing them. But what is really interesting, though, is that due to the downfall of ISIS or the culture and stuff, it does state and it does admit in her books that the gods or the caretakers of the planet at the time started to intermingle or mate with the humans to order to have a bloodline on earth to order to watch over and to be the leaders of earth and this is in her book but what what is also talked about is that because of they had to mate with the human mate with humans or to create this bloodline that the ability that they were giving these offspring started to deteriorate over time and for me personally i started to understand the reason why these type of abilities were deteriorating and the story goes the story goes in the book where she was interviewing this woman where she is a descendant of or part of the bloodline that is supposed to look over or care for humanity in a sense during this time the thing about it is is that her family was imprisoning her in her own home and using her children against her and that she could physically not handle being outside of her room that was specifically made for her because her ability was to basically sense which people are lying or which people are telling the truth but it almost seems like the ability that was given to them is a little bit too powerful for them to actually handle or can control so in the book her own family was using her in court but also using her kids against her and she was so afraid that she would never get her freedom so the way of of escape her only method of escape was basically committing suicide because she knew that they will use her kids against her and she didn't want the same fate that happened to her kids. So the only way of freedom for her so her family would stop con- controlling her or to give her some sense of control back into her life, she committed suicide. And it also makes me wonder like how many people back in the day were imprisoned by their own family members because of this type of ability or power. And this is the reason why this ability was suppressed was because of fear, abuse, and also control and manipulation. And if you don't give people the sense of freedom or give them their free will, of course, this ability is going to be suppressed. And I don't like saying this but it also seems like this ability chooses certain people in the bloodline that are ready and capable and know that they will have the freedom to use it properly it's always the story where it's either the person that has this ability does have it but they're completely controlled for the rest of their lives or this person does have this ability and ends up starts abusing it which is the story in this book But what is really interesting, though, is that it makes me wonder if this bloodline still exists on Earth or if it has died out. Because she doesn't give very much detail about the bloodline, but the story is in her book. The other thing that is an interesting feature of this book is how herbs are used. And she constantly has this story of herbs, and I think as an society and as a as an society i think that we need to start looking into alternate forms of healing especially if it's light healing sound healing or even herbology healing 
instead of using the type of methods because in her book um in her book she does state that certain physical ailments in our life whether it's burden depression just negative emotions in general can actually manifest into physical symptoms or physical ailments on the body and the only way to figure find this out is by her regression therapy where she finds out that what her soul is going through or a lot of the physical ailments that her people like some of her clients are going going through our physical ailments of what's going on in their current life, as well as stuff from their past life. So it makes me wonder how many certain types of ailments is passed over from their past lives into their now life, in their now life, but also how much of their environment is affecting their physical health. And basically just trying to learn how to release that type of burden or something that is making them physically sick in a sense. Um, she does also talk about a lot of instances of knowledge that is given to the people. But she also does talk about um, a certain type of story in the book where there were beings that used to come from a higher realm and would change form into a human and they would observe so this is like the story of the watchers or the angels watching over humanity in this sense and that story is in her book where you have very high advanced dimensional beings or light beings, and they would basically transform themselves into a human or look human. Now, there is a story in her book where people knew that they were different, but did not socialize them. But but it makes me wonder how long this has been going on. And it makes me wonder how much over the past centuries or years that we have had watchers or people try to influence culture. And it makes me wonder, like, is this against the prime directive? Like, how could they disallow this? And it discusses in her book that Earth was in a experiment. That Earth is the only planet that has free will or also some sort of like free will or an experiment in a sense and this is the reason why life here is so difficult is because we have free will or free access to stuff but we are not being used to use it properly now there is one very sickening story in this book at least for me maybe not for other people but people who are studying Atlantis need to know that people in Atlantis were very very cruel people in the story, she interviews a lady or does a aggression therapy on this lady. And she has a life in, in Atlantis where she is a subject to the experiments of what Atlantis beings were doing at the time. They were trying to heal or doing an experiment on this woman where they would cut her legs off and try to put horse legs on her. So this was like the first experiments of combining animal DNA to human animal DNA, where we would get these type of animals. This is where the story of these many different types of legends or myths of like griffins or mashed up animals was because of the Atlantan experiments. Atlantan's beings were experimenting or mixing up genes with other animals as well as human. So this is where the stories of like the centaur or other type of cryptids that we might have might actually be descendants of the Atlantean experiments back in the day. So it makes me wonder how many Atlantean experiments slash beings are still living today that are like millions and millions and millions. I want to say millions of years old, but thousands and thousands of years old that are still roaming the planet 
and that have not can be killed but they're like immortal beings and stuff and it just makes me wonder how much of stuff about Atlantis that we're not aware of but she does she does discuss that there were certain peoples in Atlantis that would preserve the knowledge of Atlantis and she also does talk about the crystal technology in her in her book and she also discussed the reason why um a little bit the reason why Atlantis was destroyed and it was destroyed in order to protect the balance of this planet they were basically knocking the I guess planet out of orbit in some instances actually destroying the planet so this is the reason why Atlantis was destroyed she does also have a story about Pompeii and a lot of other stories about um, souls crashing over into the physical spirit or in the spirit world but the one thing that does resonate and connects with me on this book is religious people especially from the christian religion um scaring people that death is scary now i'm not saying that death that i'm not trying to promote suicide i'm not trying to do any of that but she just says that death should not be scary you should not fear death because all the stories and all the clients that she has is all about having a peaceful death where these where your family or your soul family is waiting on the other side for you and that you're going back home on the soul level so for people who are christians i would really recommend reading this book especially the last couple of chapters where she talks about jesus because a lot of the stuff is something that a lot of people need to learn that we do not fear death and a lot of the stuff that we know about Jesus or the Christian religion has been changed or altered over time and it's not the same type of religion that we know it as and it does also talk about that Jesus did have women disciples like women were actually part of Jesus teaching and some of the women that Jesus were teaching also tried to protect and preserve the knowledge for other generations before they were sought out and killed and it also makes me wonder like how much ancient knowledge has been changed to the point where it's not the same type of religion or the same type of teachings that we once knew It almost seems like someone back in the day, maybe our ancestors, changed the hidden sacred knowledge of these texts, might have found them at one point, and maybe changed them. And so we're not looking at the same type of information as we once knew because it has been altered. But I do know that there are still some ancient knowledge that is still being protected today, and we still do not have access to it unless we are at a very certain vibration but but for people who are interested i recommend reading this book especially if you are interested in hearing stories about egypt um stories about herbology just it's just this book is really amazing and eye-opening of all the different collections of stories in this book i highly recommend reading it um, this book also t- does tie into Cultivated Universe, Keepers of the Garden, and also Consodians. So if you have not read those books, um, it's sort of like a layover or a connection to some of the stuff that she's talking about in her other books. But this book is really great. If you have read this book, let me know what your thoughts or opinions on it. But thank you so much for listening and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it.